So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and I've been using this Bridge Max Plus for about 3-4 days now and before we actually get into a full review, I wanted to actually compare it to the Magic Keyboard from a hardware and a function standpoint because the Bridge Max Plus is actually $100 cheaper than the Magic Keyboard so I wanted to see if it's worth saving that $100 and going with Bridge's version versus Apple's Magic Keyboard. So basically we're going to lay out everything that you would need to know to make an educated purchasing decision and make sure that you're fully equipped when it does come time to get that keyboard case with a trackpad for your M1 iPad Pro all the way down to your third generation iPad Pro. But without further ado, we're going to talk about literally everything from the trackpad to the keyboard to the design, the hardware, everything that you can imagine we're going to talk about it in this video. So stay tuned and let's get into it. So the first thing that we're gonna discuss is the actual design of both of these keyboard cases, right? We'll start with the Magic Keyboard just because it's been around for a little while and we know exactly what it is at this point, right? So the Magic Keyboard is $350 from Apple. They now come in a black and a white variant. I'm using the black one and it's still technically the old Magic Keyboard, but it still works perfectly fine with your M1 iPad Pro. But like I said, we know all about this awesome and unique design. It's got that floating mechanism with the double hinge situation. So it's got a main hinge and then a secondary hinge to make sure that the iPad kind of sits a little bit closer to you and also distributes the weight evenly to make sure that the Magic Keyboard and the iPad aren't tipping backwards. And then the finish of the Magic Keyboard is this like soft touch, rubbery material, which a lot of people do complain about because it is a fingerprint magnet for sure and dust magnet, but I kind of, I love the feel of it. I've never had many issues with it. Yes, I have to clean it every now and then, but hey, to each their own and that happens pretty much with any device, but I'm sure that the white variant of the Magic Keyboard gets way dirtier, way quicker. And then in terms of the keyboard itself, it's great. It's an awesome typing experience. The key travel's awesome. They're very flat keys. The keyboard itself lays totally flat. So if you're on a flat surface, it's gonna be a flat keyboard experience. There's no like little lift or anything for ergonomics for, you know, carpal tunnel, if that's even a thing anymore. I don't know if you guys remember that back in like 2005 when everybody had carpal tunnel, but I digress. So overall, the keyboard is great. The function is great. It is a very flat feeling situation, but if you're okay with that, then the Magic Keyboard is gonna be great. But of course we are missing that function row, which a lot of people do want. And then in terms of the trackpad, yeah, it's tiny, right? The trackpad is absolutely tiny. When I first saw the trackpad, I thought to myself like, this is not gonna work, this is not what we wanted. But lo and behold, after actually using it, yes, the trackpad is tiny, but the way you use the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard is very different than the trackpad and how you would use it on a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. It's very, I guess what I use the trackpad for is for all my gestures, just because it's a closer situation than actually going to the screen itself. And that's what the trackpad is there for. When I'm doing point and click stuff for, and that's what a trackpad is usually for on a normal laptop, that's when I kind of go to my finger. I would say it's a 50-50 split between uh, tap and click with the trackpad and tap and click with like my finger on the iPad Pro. So that's the overall hardware for the Magic Keyboard. But now let's get into this beast of the Bridge Max Plus. So the Bridge Max Plus is a totally different animal. It's made out of pure aluminum. So basically the bottom half of the Bridge Keyboard, so the part that has a trackpad and the keyboard, it feels like the bottom half of a MacBook Pro. Very sturdy, very premium, cold to the touch aluminum kind of style situation. You have those chiclet style keys, which are a little bit thicker in terms of height when it comes to comparing it to the Magic Keyboard, but still very clicky, great key travel. You can hear it. It's it's just a, it's an overall great typing experience. There's like very little to complain about. And then you do have that function row, right? With the function row, you get your, all your volume and media controls, your, you know, your forward, back, pause, volume up, volume down, brightness on the screen up and down. You get backlit keys as well. You get a spotlight search, universal search, and keyboard switcher. So pretty much all the function row keys that you would want for, especially for an iPad Pro, they're there. And then in terms of being a little bit more different and more traditional versus the Magic Keyboard, this is a single hinge kind of situation. They did change it from what they were doing last year and for those previous years where you kind of like slotted your iPad into these two little divots. But now you have an entire back that's attached by magnets. So it's very similar to the Magic Keyboard in terms of how you actually place the iPad on the device. It stays there, it's magnetic. I haven't had any issues with it falling out or moving or anything like that. And I like this implementation a lot better than their old implementation, which was like, sliding into these very, very small kind of holes and hinges for you to put your iPad Pro into that would eventually kind of squeeze the device, I think. 
And then in terms of viewing angles, it's very similar to the Magic Keyboard. I think the Magic Keyboard goes to 125 or 130 degrees of view visibility. And then the Bridge Keyboard goes to 130 in terms of viewing angle for visibility. So you can push it back to about 130 degrees and be totally fine. There is a tiny bit more wobble, I would say, on the Bridge Keyboard versus the Magic Keyboard, just because of the way the hinge is designed. But it hasn't been a big deterrent. You know, there isn't a situation where like the screen is wobbling so much or it tips back. It's just a little bit of wobble, especially if you go to the farthest viewing angle. But now let's talk about this trackpad, this behemoth trackpad, which would fit two or three Magic Keyboard trackpads into this trackpad itself. And this is where the big differences start to come into play. So with the Magic Keyboard, it is a flat style trackpad. So that means it's not a diving board. That means you can touch and click on any point of the trackpad, top left, bottom right, right in the center, and you're gonna have the same click and experience. Versus on the bridge, it is a diving board style keyboard. So mostly the bottom half or the bottom two thirds of that trackpad is going to be clickable from a physical standpoint but tap to click does work throughout the entire trackpad so if you top right and tap it it'll still click but if you want to physically click down you're gonna to have to go to like the bottom two thirds it's like a very traditional trackpad but again it's huge so that's where we're standing from a hardware situation right we're purely talking about hardware what they look like what they're made out of and then in terms of weight when the ipad pro is installed on these cases these keyboard cases I would say, I haven't actually weighed them, but I would say the bridge is probably a little bit heavier because you're basically holding onto two iPads because that's the thickness of it. Versus the iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard is still, I think, 3.1 pounds when you add it all together, which is still heavier than your traditional laptop, especially a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. But for the most part, you know, if you're keeping it in a backpack or a bag, you're not going to notice the weight is basically what I'm saying. And then one thing before I forget when it comes to hardware is when you do open up the bridge keyboard, the hinge actually pushes down a little bit. So if you do go to the farthest viewing angle, there is a little bit of a lift on the keyboard for it to be a little bit more ergonomic when you are typing. So it's a little bit more of an angle. The Magic Keyboard, like I said before, is totally flat. So now let's get into the function of these guys because that is the main reason why we're here because the bridge keyboard, it looks great, it feels great. It, again, it fits that Apple aesthetic in terms of what it's supposed to look like. It makes you feel like you have a MacBook Pro made out of an iPad Pro. Right, so from a hardware standpoint, they're both great uh, choices, I would say, right? They're very different in what they're made out of and how they look, but you can't go wrong from a hardware standpoint. Both very premium, very awesome finishes. So I think the best way to actually show off the functionality of these two keyboards is by actually showing you how the trackpad works, right? So from a keyboard perspective, just a typing perspective, Bridge has always been known to be great. Apple, the Magic Keyboard has been known to be great. It's just a matter of preference and what you like. The keys on the bridge are a little bit taller, like I mentioned. There's a little bit more key travel, then the chassis is a little bit thicker versus the Magic Keyboard. It's very a flat design. Yes, there's still plenty of travel. I think about a millimeter of travel on the keys, but keys are a little bit flatter, but zero complaints on the actual typing experience on the keyboards on both of them. You can sit down on both of them and type for hours, whether it's essays, emails, notes, scripting, whatever the case is. If you're just typing, they're both amazing. But what I wanna show you is the gestures and the navigation with the trackpad on the bridge versus the actual Magic Keyboard and how Apple intended it to be used, right? So in order to do that, we're gonna get out of this view and we're gonna do a top-down view. So we're gonna do a couple of common gestures on the Magic Keyboard, the same gestures on the actual bridge keyboard, and then we're gonna do a little side-by-side -side to see which one works better, if there's any latency on the bridge keyboard, and kind of see what's going on there. So let's go to the other view. So what I wanted to do here was actually show off the gestures and the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard to kind of show you exactly how Apple intended it to be used. So if I just move around one finger, this is the point and click situation. If I just tap on YouTube, it opens up. If I also tap without actually clicking, it also opens up. And like I said, this is not a diving board style trackpad. So you can click up here and it'll work. You can click down here and it'll also work. So that's all awesome, fine and dandy. Another thing that I wanna test out is the gestures. So if I use my three fingers, swipe up, I get multitasking. If I use two fingers to swipe up, I get rid of them. And then if I go out of there and use one finger, if I swipe all the way up, I should get notification center, swipe all the way down to get rid of it, swipe all the way up on the top right to get control center, and then tap away to get rid of it. Another one that we can check out is a three finger slide over gesture. So if we move over, you can kind of multitask and see all the applications that are open. And you can see that it's working very well, zero lag, zero latency, swipe up to get out of there. And then I also wanna try out how fluid the pinch to zoom is, right? So here you can see, this is my thumbnail from my last video. If you guys wanna check it out, definitely, because there's some awesome applications in here, especially public, link in the description down below. But you can see that a pinch to zoom works exactly as if you were using the screen itself, right? So you can see the animation is pretty similar, right? 
So now what I want to see is do these gestures work as fluidly as they do on the bridge keyboard compared to the magic keyboard. So if we get out of here, let's switch it up and go to the bridge keyboard. So again, you can see how much bigger this trackpad is compared to the Apple Magic Keyboard trackpad. It is a completely different ball game when it comes to the trackpad size. But now let's see when it comes to trackpad function. So we gotta turn this guy on. Should be connected automatically and you can see that we have the mouse ready to go. So again, we're gonna try a couple different things. We're gonna try the same motion. So the first one we're gonna try is just pointing and clicking. Works perfectly, swipe up, then tap to click. Also working, swipe up. So now what I want to try to do is actually click on top of here. Because remember, this is a diving board trackpad, so it's a little bit different. If I try to click up here, it doesn't work. So what I got to do is actually click down here to open it up. So pointing and clicking does work pretty normally. The trackpad is very responsive, I would say. I, th I would say from a quick function standpoint, like this trackpad is a 9.5 out of 10, if this is a 10 out of 10. There's like something kind of missing, but I mean, for the most part, I would say like 99.9% like .9 of the time it is fluid. But now let's try all the gestures that I was talking about. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go all the way up to see if the notifications come down. They do, swipe down, we're good. Control center, swipe up, all good to go. Now let's try to actually multitask, right? So if I swipe up with three fingers, so you can see there's sometimes it does miss it, right? So if I get out of here, let's go again. So like nine out of 10 times you do a gesture, it'll work. But it's like that, you know, that 10th time that sometimes it doesn't or you need to redo it or maybe emphasize a gesture just a little bit more for it to work perfectly. So here, you know, we can quit out of here. All good. Open up YouTube. The next thing I do want to try out is actually moving from side to side. So you can see that this does work as well. No big deal. Move everything around. And then the next thing I want to try to do is actually multitask. So, so if we open up a Safari window and I scroll all the way down to open up another Safari window, you can see that there's a little bit of a difference, right? So it does hold over, I can move it over and it does work. So overall the gestures and how Apple intended it to be used, like I said, it's like 95% of the way of what Apple wanted it to be. And it's so impressive that Bridge has been able to do this purely via Bluetooth, which is kind of crazy to think about because the latency is really not there. There's not that much latency, if any at all. And then the final test that I want to do is a pinch to zoom. So we're going to try this live because I actually haven't tried pinch to zoom quite yet. So this is what it is. You can see, I mean, it works pretty well. You know, no real complaints. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like I said, the main goal of this video is to give you guys all the facts, all the information, all of the testing that you would need to make an educated decision. Because the Bridge Max Plus is $100 cheaper in terms of retail than the Magic Keyboard, right? So you have to take into account that you're paying $100 less to get 99% of the way there, I would say. Like, like I mentioned, the trackpad functionality is like 9.5 out of 10 versus like a 10 out of 10 with the Magic Keyboard. And you know, the, like I said before, those are great strides because before when Bridge first implemented their trackpad, back when like the trackpad situation or the mouse situation was more of an assistive touch thing, it was very wonky. It, was, it just wasn't ready, I would say. The technology really wasn't there. So what Bridge has accomplished is actually amazing. Again, all through Bluetooth, all through quick on, all through pretty much just trial and error and making sure that their product is good to go for the market. So like I said, overall, so I think it's personally worth it spend $100 less to get an awesome keyboard. And like I said, the build is awesome. It's made out of aluminum. You get that function row key, which lets you change the brightness and media controls and things like that. So overall, it's a great package for the price in my opinion. But like I said, if you do want to stick with the Apple ecosystem and use it exactly like Apple wanted it to be done, then Magic Keyboard is literally the only option. Magic Keyboard is the only option. I know that Logitech also uses three pin connectors, but that's a little bit more of a protective case, more of a bulky case than these two are, right? These are more so like a MacBook Pro replacement, and then you have the Magic Keyboard, which is something in its own kind of territory. So at the end of the day, it's a decision made based off of preference, because for the most part, right, if you have an iPad Pro, you don't have either of these, and you're trying to make a, you know, a decision on a keyboard case, then you won't know what you're missing with the Magic Keyboard, right? It's the same situation as we used to have when, you know, iPhones, when half the iPhones were OLED versus LCD, and you really couldn't tell the difference on the screens until you put them side by side. So if you've never experienced the Magic Keyboard, then the Bridge Keyboard is gonna be awesome, right? But if you've been using that Magic Keyboard for an entire year like I have, then you start to see those tiny little nuances that most people aren't going to actually 
take into account, right? So again, if you've never had either of these and you wanna save $100, Bridge is the way to go. But if you've had the Magic Keyboard already, then you're gonna see a tiny bit of a difference. And I mean, it's minuscule, guys, which a lot of people might not even know the difference. And like I said, if you've never used the Magic Keyboard, you definitely won't. So I'm gonna link the Bridge Keyboard down below if you guys wanna check it out. They did send this one out to me to review, but they're not seeing this video before you guys are and they didn't pay me anything to, see, to say anything. So this is just my honest truth and I just wanted to compare everything because I know this is a big question. People wanna know, should I spend 350 on the Magic Keyboard? Should I spend 250? And then I'm also gonna make a video because I did purchase a $70 you know, keyboard trackpad case and I kinda wanna see what $70 gets you. So we'll have a like low-end, mid-range, and high-end in terms of keyboard trackpads for the iPad Pros. But that's gonna do for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I know it was a long one, but like I said, I wanted it to be in-depth and wanted to give you all the information that you guys needed. Everything's gonna be linked down below if you guys wanna check anything out, but that's gonna do it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace.